So while the Biden administration has basically told our Border Patrol to stand down and allow illegal aliens from foreign countries to come on through our southern border unmolested, unharmed, and virtually undetained, he's also floating the idea of shutting down, locking down, cutting off Florida. I wonder how that's going to play out, boys and girls. The executive order czar, the alleged president of the United States, Joseph Biden, is yet considering a new decree. Because apparently the 50 plus executive orders that he has already signed in just three weeks in office aren't quite enough of his stepping outside the constitutional parameters of his duty as the president. Basically ruling the country, governing the country by decree rather than a legislative process. Funny, some of us thought we lived in a democratic, republic, representative form of government, but apparently that is no more. We're going to get socialism whether we want it or not, and we are going to be governed by authoritarianism. Gee, I thought that's what the left was accusing the guy who was president of, and that's why he had to go. We can't live under his authoritarian rule, yet it was under his rule we had the greatest rockinest economy, and we were um, um, free. Absolutely free. Well, President Biden is considering, because according to a Biden staff member, we are at war with coronavirus. Therefore, all options must be on the table. And they're floating this idea that there is a new strand of coronavirus, which is much more contagious, which came over apparently from the United Kingdom, and it's really descended upon Florida, and that could be the super spreader to the rest of the nation. Therefore, they are considering locking down Florida. In other words, you won't be able to go to there, and if you are there, you won't be able to leave. I think it would be unconstitutional, it would be unwise, and it would be unjust. And if you think about it, restricting the right of our country while allowing illegal aliens to pour across the southern border unmolested would be a ridiculous but very damaging farce. So we will oppose it 100 percent. It would not be based in science. It would purely be a political attack against the people of Florida. Governor DeSantis is absolutely right to push back on this. It is not constitutional. And the fact that we are allowing illegals to just pour in. In fact, the Biden administration has now basically decreed that those who are in political exile waiting on the Mexican side of the border are going to be allowed in. They're going to be allowed in at undisclosed location points. In other words, they're not going to tell us where along the border they're being allowed in. Uh, they'll be given their court date to appear if they ever bother to show up for it, and then they will just be allowed into our country. Does anybody think that places like Honduras are doing a good job at screening for coronavirus? That there's any type of vaccination taking place of people from these third world squalor nations? Of course not. And yet it's perfectly okay to allow them in an entry, and we're not worried about that on any level being a super spreader. But obviously, families wanting to go to Disney World, that could kill the entire country. This is a bunch of hogwash. We're going to get into it. But let's take a little stroll down memory lane. The governor that won the Emmy, that now we're finding out, according to his own staff members, did lie about, well, you know, the number of people that He's responsible for killing in nursing homes with his decree to put all people infected with coronavirus initially in nursing homes and wiping out the elderly population of New York. Over 15,000 people in nursing homes died. Let me pause right there. You do realize that half of the deaths in this nation are people who were extremely elderly and confined. 
we might call them quarantined. And yet the whole nation has to go through all of this mandate hogwash because the most vulnerable of our nation, who were locked down, quarantined, sadly passed, many of whom because of foolish actions by people like Governor Cuomo, who was propped up by the media. They pit him against Donald Trump. Why, his press conferences were so much more informative, and he was following the science, and Donald Trump was just shooting from the hip and pulling answers out of his backside and making things up and lying and trying to kill people and wanted them to inject bleach, all of which was pure hogwash. And it was President Trump who actually created warp speed and got this nation back on its feet and moving. Think how much farther we would be along right now if he were still in the White House. But I digress. Because at one point, when New York was screaming and crying about how they were just absolutely overwhelmed with coronavirus, despite the fact that President Trump said, ships to New York City to act as hospitals. Samaritan's Purse went there and set up a hospital. Military went to Central Park and set up hospitals, none of which were ever used because they never really were overwhelmed, but they did have more coronavirus cases than anywhere else. Well, it stands to reason. They are the international port of entry, both by ship and by air. But when the president decided to suggest that maybe we would have to lock down New York for a couple of weeks, that didn't sit well with Governor Cuomo. What, what if he does want a lockdown? Would, would you sue to stop him? You said you don't think it's legal. Oh, well, look, a lockdown is what they did in Wuhan, China. And we're not in China, and we're not in Wuhan. Uh, I don't believe it would be illegal. I don't believe I don't believe it'd be legal. I believe it would be illegal. I don't believe you can say you are you cannot leave the state of New York, uh, or the state of New Jersey, or the state of California. And by the way, if you wanted to start to do that, uh, that would ripple all across the country, right? That it's it's New York, New Jersey, Connecticut today. Tomorrow it's New Orleans. The day after it's Detroit. Uh, then it's Texas, then it's Florida, then it's uh, California. At the same time that we say we're trying to restart the economy, uh, I think it, uh, I can't remember in history when it was done. You'd have to go back to the Civil War to talk about uh, borders of states like that. I think it would paralyze the economy. I think it would uh, shock the economic markets in a way that we've never seen before. Uh, as a governor, I'm not going to close off my borders. Trucks have to come in, food has to come in, mail has to come in. Fast forward to the present times. Well, we know that Cuomo is embattled and we'll talk about that in a different monologue. But now we have President Biden wanting to do to Florida what Trump suggested might have to be done to New York. And he never said a full lockdown, he said a quarantine, which Governor Cuomo ended up did doing, and a lot longer than two weeks. He killed his own economy, he killed his own state. What Biden is doing has nothing to do with science, it has nothing to do with the pandemic. It is called payback. Say that with me, boys and girls. Payback. See, first of all, the liberals are not happy that the paradise of our country, Florida, is conservative. They voted overwhelmingly for Donald J. Trump. Uh, Donald Trump has made Florida his home. He has been welcomed by the people of Florida. In other words, they didn't ban him. They're not trying to kick him out. They're not trying to run him out. They want him. And there's, you know, I've said before, if Trump really wanted to make an ultimate comeback, he should run for a congressional seat out of Florida, which he would win hands down, and then he could really take over things by becoming the Speaker of the House. Oh! Talk about cherry on the Sunday for the ultimate comeback and, shall we say, just a tad bit of revenge. 
That said, we have Holly weirdos who now hate Florida. I'll never make a movie in Florida. I'll never go to Florida. Florida's dead to me. Yet, look at what the Democrats have done to California, which at one time, politically speaking, was conservative. The likes of Ronald Reagan and John Wayne ran California. Look what runs it now, and look what we've been left with. Out of control, illegal immigration. The homelessness rate is completely out of control. People living on the streets, living in filth, living in squalor, human feces, hypodermic needles everywhere throughout San Francisco and L.A. Funny thing is, though, why aren't these people dropping dead from COVID? I mean, if we're all supposed to be in this lockdown, shutdown, wearing five masks, stay away from each other, shouldn't the homeless people in this country all be dead right now? But they're not. In fact, we don't even know if very many of them even got COVID. What's that all about? Well, can you say immunity? You have an immune system? And the more it's exposed to, it strengthens it. You know, the human body is an incredible creation, not an evolution. It's a creation. And the human body is designed that the more stress you put it through, the stronger it gets. That's why we exercise. That's why we lift weights. It makes us stronger. And we have an immune system when functioning properly... When it gets exposed to things, it has what it needs to fight it off. And so when Fauci says the only way we can ever reach herd immunity is through mass vaccination survey says, eh, thanks for playing, please pick up our consolation game on your way off the stage, you ignoramus. That is not how you reach herd immunity. You reach herd immunity by letting a virus do what a virus does. You let it spread. You do your very best to confine people who are in what you would consider the risk category. Extremely elderly and those who have very serious extenuating health circumstances. You protect them the best you can. Everyone else, you assume the risk and you live your life. That's what they did in Florida. And you know what happened? Florida is not at the top of the list in this country for corona deaths, corona infections, per capita. In fact, Florida doesn't even make the top 10. Florida might be somewhere in the top 25. So out of basically half the states in the country, Florida's in the middle. The middle. The state that stayed open. The state that lets you sit down in a restaurant at full capacity. The state that let fans come to the Super Bowl. Let them have their parties in the streets, despite the fact that they have been vilified every single day by the lying legacy corporate corrupt mainstream media. DeSantis has been called a super spreader, a killer, that all they're doing in Florida is killing people, and yet the two states that have been under the most severe of lockdowns, New York and California, by double digits lead the nation in problems. Oh, and also bankruptcy. Because, see, they now want to be bailed out. And I'm sure Uncle Joe, that's part of the what he's going to do. So this is not about stopping the virus. This is not about your health. This is payback. Because, see, on one level, Florida makes Dr. Fauci, the CDC, look bad. Look really, really, really bad. Because every time Dr. Fauci predicts doom, gloom, we're all going to die if we get together for Easter. We're all going to die if we get together for Thanksgiving. We're all going to die if we get together for Christmas. We're all going to die if you have a Super Bowl party. None of which happen. None of it. Florida opened their beaches. Florida opened Disney World. Disneyland in California is still closed. Been closed over a year. They don't have a statewide mask mandate. A lot of businesses do ask the patrons put a mask on, apparently like Disney World does, but I'm told that kind of once you're there, you know, throughout the day the masks come down. And they're not dropping like flies. 
And so this flies in the face of Fauci and the fear mongers. People going to the beach, people swimming in pools, and they're okay. And people from around the country, this is the real problem, from around the country, especially during this thing that we call winter, getting on planes and going there and surviving and living normally and then deciding, why do I live in New York? Why do I live in California? I want to live here. All we hope and pray for Florida is don't allow all these libloons that are coming in from New York and California to overtake your government. Otherwise, you will become as big a cesspool as San Francisco or New York City. Don't forget that. So this is not about follow the science. This is about payback. This is about the fact that Florida has done what President Trump wanted the entire nation to do. Be open. Go to school. Go to work. Go out to eat. Go to a concert. Hey, Florida, you know what we could do that would be like totally, completely like awesome? Start letting there be concerts again. You know, let bands and singers come and do concerts and we know that community theaters are open for plays. Just turn everything wide open. Wide open. Let the people in the entertainment industry, the ones that are now looking down their pharisaical noses at you, their holier-than-thou noses at you, let some of these Hollywood production companies start realizing, you know what, uh, good weather in Florida... We could probably produce TV shows and movies there a lot cheaper than California. Stand-up comedians, singers, rock bands. Why are we based out of L.A.? We can't do anything here. We can't, we can't even have a nightclub open. Let's go to Florida. See, this is what the Biden administration can't handle. And they do want to kill the Florida economy. Because, again, it makes all these Democratic states like Michigan and New Jersey that all stayed so closed and killed their own businesses. And here's Florida. Open. Ohio is in the process of really opening. Because, you know, Governor DeWine, he finally lifted the, the, the curfew that the state's been under for a year. No more curfew in Ohio. And my prediction is... It's going to become even more open in the next couple of months, despite the fact he's doing a little saber rattling, saying, well, you know, if our hospitalizations go back up, I'll have to put the cur... He's not going to put any curfew on. He knows, number one, he's in political trouble, and he's going to get primary. He knows it. And even though he still has a couple years to go, election season starts basically next year, which means you ramp up for it now. Which means now he's got to shift back conservative because he knows he's in trouble on the lockdowns and the quarantines he put us under. I think DeWiner also has figured out that President Dementia, who does everything by decree and not by a legislative process, um, the Ohio economy is based on, what's that word? Fracking. Fracking. And if Biden, like he did the Keystone XL Pipeline says no more fracking. Goodbye, Ohio economy. So, he's got to now. I My prediction is for Ohio, you're going to see the mass go away in the next few weeks. You are going to see everything be allowed to be wide open. Restaurants, you'll be allowed to operate at full capacity, which you basically are now, but you got to jump through all kinds of hoops. I think the hoops are going to go away. I think movie theaters will be told. No more this every other row, every three seats, hogwash, just open. In fact, they'll be encouraged. Start booking concerts, start booking live venues, start booking stand-up comedians, open up the stadiums, let ball teams have fans. Why? He's got to build up revenue streams. He's got to really open the economy in case Grandpa Joe turns off the oil spigot. Bum, ba dum bum. And Governor DeSantis is going to push back. Because remember now, even Governor Cuomo, 
said, well, you know, we do have commerce and, and interstate laws which prohibit states from being closed. Ta-da! So it will no doubt end up before the Supreme Court. Uh, I'll go to Florida if the president says you can't, just cause. Just cause. If we can let illegals into this country, but we are going to punish and beat down and imprison our own citizens, Houston, we have a serious problem. And for you imbeciles that actually voted for Biden, thanks for this. I hope you, I hope you go bankrupt. I really, really do. And for those of us that are still, I have to be careful how I word this because I don't want to be accused of riling everybody up. But for those of us that are still fighting the good fight, and by that, I mean standing up for what's right, pushing back and using facts and truth, stay in it. Stay in it. Don't quit. Don't get weary in well-doing. Stay in it. And Florida, stay open. Hey, that's it for this rant. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you're a subscriber to the channel. Smack the bell and click the word all to get notification of my next rant.